Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM has launched a bidding process for land in Malanga, which can be leased by private generators to produce electricity. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the initiative. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to this land released scheme by ESCOM? The main background is a reform that we made that is allows projects below 100 megawatts in size to proceed without a NERSA license and that we've seen a lot of uh, ingenuity and energy uh, around that reform. There haven't been a lot of registrations, which is the, the big step and the final step to get uh, nurses registration. But we've already seen that about 4,000 megawatts uh, of mining industry uh, electricity capacity has been announced or is on the cards. Anglo-Americans has announced that they want to be fully renewable energy and have uh, set a, a firm date for that. So we can see there's a lot of action that is now taking place. So, um, Sassel's doing a lot. ArcelorMittal's just announced plans to study uh, also two 100 megawatt plants. So uh, private companies who have traditionally bought their electricity from uh, Eskom, and we're looking at, uh, for two reasons, decarbonisation is a big imperative for all these companies, especially exporters. And uh, the other is security of supply and to start reducing uh, the cost of electricity, because we know what's happening with Eskom tariffs. We know that Eskom security supply is very fragile. There's been an intensification of load shedding, um, and they tend to lean on the big electricity consumers first before they lean on the rest of us. There's a lot of activity uh, going on, and hopefully we're going to start seeing real activity in terms of projects, but I think that is to come. So that's really the, the reform which allows you to build a 100 megawatt plant without a license, to wheel that electricity through the network and to sell it to yourself or to third parties. So that's, a, that's the big change that's happened in the system. There's still a lot of red tape to get to the point of registration, which I think Operation Vulundlele is looking at at the moment to try and get rid of that red tape so that we can get these registrations finally from NERSA. But uh, there is definitely action that's happening. And Eskom, in response to that reform, said, well, we've got uh, a massive constraint in the country and that constraint is really grid capacity. So we need more electricity co to come on to the electricity system from both Eskom and from private uh, IPPs. But we have this problem, uh, Western, Northern, uh, Eastern Cape where the best solar and wind resources are in the country really don't have a lot of uh, uh, grid capacity. So in order to sort of lubricate the, the wheels of this reform, Eskom announced last year that they would release a lot of potential their, their land in Pumalanga next to their power stations for RPPs to, to take advantage of and that would be very in close proximity to grid capacity. And now the next step was the move on 8th of uh, this month to actually uh, release a tender a request for uh, proposals for bidders, private bidders to take up this lease opportunity uh, uh, for um, renewable energy on land next to power stations. So that's really the background. We've got a, the main thing is we've got an electricity constraint. We've then got a grid constraint and Eskom to try and tap into this reform is making land on a leased basis available to RPPs to actually put up solar wind plants in Mpumalanga. Not the best solar resource, not the best wind resource in the country, but better than many other countries in the world. Uh, relatively, and the big thing is that you get grid capacity. How much capacity does ESCOM believe can be developed? Uh, during a briefing this week, uh, Andre de Reitz, the CEO, indicated that they're looking at around a thousand megawatts initially from this land release program, and they're really looking at projects that can come on quickly. So it's all about speed. I think that's going to be, uh, when you look at the tender documentation, it's all about are you ready? basically to proceed. We're giving you land, we're giving you the grid connection, which is of, of often the big constraint to a lot of these projects. And it doesn't have to go through a centralized procurement program like the uh, Renewable Energy Independent Power Producer Program. So it, it can go ahead uh, quite quickly. Uh, and they're looking at uh, this initial phase of 1,000 megawatts being added in a fairly short order sort of before 2025. How does this fit into broader moves to inject more electricity into the South African system? 
Yeah, as this, this reform is important, so as we see private money, private energy is going into building this uh, private renewable capacity that will be with the electrons being sold to itself uh, or sold to third parties. So that uh, the, we know the Minerals Council figure only of, of 4,000 megawatts, but there's a lot more potential because that's just the mining members. And uh, we're seeing the non-mining members also coming forward with projects. We see a lot of smaller projects all over town uh, going up because uh, the security supply and the costs make sense more and more. But there are as well, obviously, the big procurement programs. Now we know that the risk mitigation, RPP, which was uh, released as an emergency tender for 2,000 uh, megawatts, but uh, has been delayed three times and could be delayed again at the end of this month. That's the new deadline. That's the one procurement program. There's a lot of criticism of that program, not just the car power ship and the corruption allegations around that and the environmental uh, uh, problems with that and giving emergency projects 25-year PPAs. But really the design is really going to raise the cost of the electricity coming from those power plants. It's not the bidder's fault, it's the design. Uh, the bidders have come to the party, you know, obviously the gas projects were the easiest, but they're facing the biggest headwind, but people have come together and put together very innovative uh, battery storage plus wind plus solar plus some gas to actually get this across the line. It's already, as I've said before, a square peg in a round hole. It's not fit for purpose and it's not well designed, but they've come to the party and there could be a, a, a part of that sign, so that we'll have to see whether there's going to be some signing at the end of April or whether there's going to be another delay. Then we've got the fifth bid window uh, of the Renewable Energy Programme. That's been, you know, we got the names in October of the preferred bidders, again, the April date for financial close. And again, there's concerns about that, whether that's going to close very aggressively priced by many of those projects. As we know, the, the, the whole sand has shifted under that, given the supply chain constraints, the price increases that have been amplified now with the Ukraine uh, conflict or Russia's invasion of Ukraine with the COVID lockdowns in China. So there are concerns that both the pricing and the actual ability to get these things uh, in terms of schedule uh, is, is a concern, so there'll be a lot of attention being paid. And then there's a six bid window that has now been released, which indicates we are entering a phase of regular procurement of renewable energy. But if there's a big failure rate at the end of April, I think that could have a knock on effect for the six bid window. And it's going to have implications for the architecture and design also of those tender documents. So there are a number of fairly near term opportunities. Uh, through the centralised procurement programmes to add new electricity to the, the network. And I think very importantly through the, the reform, the 100 megawatt reform, because they don't have to jump through just as many hoops as those centralised procurement programmes. All this relies on, on confidence and is there confidence in South Africa? Uh, we know that we've been knocked massively over the last few years. COVID, the riots, now the floods in KwaZulu-Natal are going to have implications. This all knocks us backwards. And uh, uh, there's also a lot of uncertainty in policy. There's a lot of uncertainty around politics. And we were asking RPPs and banks and financiers to put a lot of money into long lead time assets and long life assets. And I think uh, there's still uh, not a lot of happiness that we settled on our electricity and energy policy. And we get very mixed messages out of government and that could really undermine confidence and that will undermine the, the investments that are now beyond urgent. Thank you. That's the second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.